Okay, in this video, we are going to look at the accounting treatment should the asset, in this case, it is a PPE, uh, may be impaired. So, MFRS 136 prescribe accounting treatment for impairment of asset, right? Impairment of asset. And uh, MFRS 136 should be read together with MFRS 116 uh, when we de deal with the situation of impairment. So there are indicator given in MFRS 136 that shows an asset are being impaired, which means that the carrying amount of the asset no longer reflect its recoverable amount. What are the examples of indication? Number one, physical damage. Let's say you have a building and the building was physically damaged, maybe the ground floor of the building. It was damaged due to the flood, for example. That is one example of in the impair, impairment indicator. Number two, these are some of the indication. Technological obsolescence. For example, you have a machine, but the machine has gone obsolete due to the technological factors that you can no longer, uh, the machine can no longer uh, perform the way it should be because it is already out of date. So that can also be what caused the uh, machine to be impact. Number three, maybe in a production in a factory, uh, the faulty processes during the production process may have also caused the asset, the machine to have been impact so that is also another indicator of impairment the next one is that if you have a ppe that was used to produce a product for your company maybe the production of the goods coming from that ppe can no longer fetch sufficient return sufficient return here means in the form of uh, cash uh, maybe generated from the sale of the asset or maybe the return here in terms of the revenue uh, from the sale of the asset that was produced from the machine. So MFRS 136 uh, provide that if an asset is being impaired, it is normally being indicated if the carrying amount of the asset exceed the recoverable amount. So if the carrying amount of the asset exceed the recoverable amount, this situation is what you call impairment loss. An impairment loss is expense of in the profit or loss. So let us look at this diagram to illustrate better. So let's say the carrying amount of the asset. Let's say carrying amount of the asset, which is cost minus accumulated depreciation. Let's say it is 100,000. So just to give you a simple example. And let's say the recoverable amount. What is recoverable amount? Recoverable amount is defined as the higher of fair value less cost to sell and value in use. So if you have two values, the fair value less cost to sell and value in use, which one is higher? So the one which is higher is considered as a recoverable amount. Let's say the fair value less cost to sell is 70,000. The value in use is 80,000. Okay, can you answer me which one is higher? Value in use or fair value less cost to sell? Class? Value in use. Okay. Value in use. Yeah, so fair value less cost to sell is lower, right? So the value in use will be the recoverable amount. However, if the fair value less cost to sell is 70 and the value in use is let's say 50,000. So the recoverable amount will no longer be the value in use because value in use, if I say just now, was 50,000, is slightly lower than the fair value less cost to sell. Okay, in that situation, where value in use is 50,000, fair value to sell is 70,000, what is the recoverable amount class? If the value in use is not 80 but 50,000, what will be the recoverable amount? 70,000 or 50,000? 70,000. So meaning that recoverable amount can either be fair value less cost to sell or value in use, depending on which one is higher. So if you compare now carrying amount with the recoverable amount that we earlier decided, you can see that the carrying amount is 100,000. Recoverable amount is 
80,000. So therefore, you can see that the carrying amount exceeds recoverable amount. And this is what you call impairment loss. And that impairment loss of 20,000 is an expense. So it will be debited to the impairment loss in the SOPL. IL is impairment loss, 20,000. And it will be credited to accumulated in payment accumulated in payment loss it will be uh, credited to accumulated in payment loss how much that 80 thousand so that was the case here let's apply this uh, in our uh, question so i have already picked up a question for you which is a question from common test may 20 23 yeah where we did this question before this and i'm now going to focus only on one asset which is the factory building so i'm going to put the highlight here which is factory building uh, the initial cost was 20 million the uh, useful life was 50 years no residual value monthly basis and the date of purchase of that asset is on 1st of july 2016. I will ignore information regarding land and office building. My focus is only here. This part here, the one that I am putting a rectangle shape here. Yeah, that one. So let us look at this information. At the end of year 2021, Mentakap Town was hit by the worst flooding in decades. The flood had crippled the entire town and caused severe damage. Remember, severe damage is one of the indicator of impairment. And the physical damage here is the physical damage done to the building due to the flood. And the flood was the companies uh, the attacking the company called Glory Berhad's premise and where the factory is there. So 1st January 2022, meaning that that was at the end of the year, now come the new year. 1st January 2022, the company decided to conduct an impairment test on factory building. On that date, the fair value less cost to sell is 10 million. And the value in use is 10.55 million. So what you need to see is the information in the last sentence in that paragraph the one here, here, is telling you regarding recoverable amount. And recoverable amount is actually higher between fair value, less cost to sell, which is 10 million, and value in use, which is 10.55 million. So if you can see here, value in use is higher than the fair value less cost to sell so recoverable amount will be 10.55 million so you need to use that and then you are going to compare with the carrying value on the 1st of january 2022 let's do it here so number one Okay, let's just calculate that. We'll do the computation first. So the cost on the date of purchase, earlier I've mentioned it was uh, 20 million for the case of factory building. So we already been given uh, the, uh, the information just now, which is on recoverable amount. Recoverable amount is take the higher between the fair value less cost to sell. Which one is higher? Value in use. If you compare with the fair value less cost to sell. So I take this, I put it as recoverable amount. My next task is to find out what is the carrying amount on the impairment test date. So to find that, I need to take the cost and we need to take it by deducting the accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation here is from 1st of July 2020, 2016. So I put here 1st of July 2016 up until the impairment date, which is on 1st of January 2022. So how long is that? That was five and a half years. 
Remember the estimated use supply was 50. So 20 million divided by 50 times the number of years from the date of purchase until the impairment test date. So it was five and a half years. So you will have 2.2 million, the accumulated depreciation. With that, you will get the carrying amount on impairment test date to be 17.8. And you can see it is higher than the recoverable amount. So therefore, you will have an impairment loss, which is expense off to the SOPL of 10.725. 10.725. Right. So let us look at the requirement of the question. We have done the calculation because the question asks you to do the calculation. So let's look at the requirement. You are asked to determine whether there is an impairment loss. Yes, there is an impairment loss of how much just now? It was impairment loss of what we calculated uh, to be 7250. So that was the uh, uh, answer there that you are asked to determine the impairment loss. In case you are asked to explain the accounting treatment or to show the journal entry, here is the information. Okay. So here, uh, this one is showing the journal entry for the impairment loss that you calculated just now. There be impairment loss in the SOPL credit accumulated impairment loss 7250. So that will be shown later in the SOPL. And do not forget this accumulated impairment loss will affect your movement of PPE. Because now the... Um, Carrying amount will be cost minus accumulated depreciation minus accumulated impairment loss. So if you are to, uh, to explain the accounting treatment, uh, you need to mention of about the carrying, number one is about the, what happened on 1st of January, the carrying amount of 17.8 million is higher than the recoverable amount. So you need to also mention that the recoverable amount what was recoverable amount? Sometimes marks are given for this. So recoverable amount is how much? RM 10.55 is the higher. Just mention the higher between the fair value less cost to sell. How much was it? It was 10 million, right? 10 million. And the value in use. Value in use here is 10.55 million. So, so that one is part of the answer as well. Because you just simply say the recoverable amount. The recoverable amount here is the higher between the fair value less cost to sell and value in use. Therefore... There is an impairment loss amounting to how much? Show the amount, 7250. Show the calculation and explain the accounting treatment that it was expense of to profit or loss. Next, you have to mention what are the carrying amount of the fat free building after the impairment, which is now restated. So the word here is that you restate the carrying amount to the recoverable amount. So you restate it to become how much? 17.8 million. Okay, that will be affecting your uh, carrying amount of the total PP as a whole. Okay, that's it for the, pre the explanation for the impairment test.